third point. Are we live? Amen. The rule of engagement. In the kingdom of God, there is what we call the rule of engagement. Are we together? Any place in the government of Kenya, in any workplace, in every family, in every company, there is the rule of engagement. For you to understand how spiritual things work, it is important that you also understand how natural laws operate. You can never understand how spirituality works until you understand how the natural works. Are we in church? Are you sure you're following me? For example, an ambassador of America to Kenya or an ambassador of the UK to Kenya has how they operate when they are here because they represent the interest of their country in the country of Kenya. Is that true? Is that true? Now, therefore, if the economy of Kenya is going down and the fuel prices are going up and people are complaining, the ambassador for America in Kenya does not complain when Kenyans are complaining. I will show you something. Because the rule of engagement is different. They have what we call diplomatic immunities. Follow me. And they enjoy certain rights. And they are not surviving on the economy of Kenya. They are purely surviving on the depend. Their survival here depends on the economy of their country. Is that true? Follow me, Pole Pole. Is that true? So going by that, it means when Kenyans are complaining for fuel price, an ambassador for South Africa for Kenya can't complain about fuel price. Why? Because they don't buy fuel on their budget. Their, fuel, their, their cars are fueled by the budget of their country. Is that true? So meaning they don't depend on the economy of Kenya to survive in Kenya. So when Kenyans are complaining, they can't complain because the rule of engagement is different. I'm teaching something very sensitive. I pray you understand me here. When a normal American citizen comes to Kenya, the rule of engagement is different. For an ambassador here in Kenya, they can't complain because they don't spend their money. They, the houses they live in are being paid by their country. Their fuel is fueled by their country. Their children are schooled by the country. Their life is taken care of by their country. But a normal American citizen, when they come to Kenya, the rule of engagement differs. Because they come on their own budget. Oh, you're not hearing me again. They don't come on the budget of the country. They come on their own pocket. They stay in hotels on their pockets. They eat food on their pockets. They thrive on their pockets. So the rule of engagement must be different. So American citizen that is visiting Kenya can complain because the life is hard. But ambassador for America cannot complain because they don't depend on their salary to survive. Oh God help me. I must, I'm teaching something very deep here. So going by that, meaning to say these two people are Americans. If all of them are in a foreign land. One is feeling pain, another one is enjoying life. The rule of engagement. Do you know where the change is? Ambassador has been sent by the government to represent the interest of America. So when they send you, they take care of you. They provide for you. They make sure they protect you. They are in charge of everything around you. They have sent you. But when you send yourself, You pay your bills. You take care of yourself. You take all expenses on your pocket. Do you know why? Because you are not representing the interest of the country. You are representing your own interest. It is your own thing. It must cost you. But when you come on behalf of your country, even though you will go to Masai Mara and enjoy things, but they will take care. Because primarily, you came to different. Now, the rule of engagement changes. 
I'll teach you something very deep today. And that's why all of us are Christians. All of us are Christians. All of us go to church. All of us believe in God. But we, do, we don't enjoy the same immunities. Some people come to church because if I don't come, prophet will ask me where I was. But others come because they have interest of this ministry at heart. They have interest of the kingdom at heart to represent. Look at your neighbor, tell them, do you understand the rule of engagement? Or ask somebody, Muliza Mutra Spokuliza Mwambena Koshuku. Do you understand the rule of engagement? Sit down. We are all Kenyans. Most of us here, 90%, I think almost 99%, we are Kenyans, isn't it? By birth. Is that true? So therefore, the Kenyan government is mandated to protect us. Whether we are born again or not, whether we are schooled or not, whether we are tall or short, whether the, we are from the tribe of the president or not, whether we supported the president or not, it is the right that the government must protect us. The same way, it is your right that God must protect you. And that's why sometimes, unastuka tu kuna kitu mbae ingefanyika, unastuka imekupita, fya, na hata huku wamba, unasema, hey, haki munga menesaidia. Yo gari venye likwe na kuja, ja, 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 haki munga menesaidia. Anybody, have you been there before? Have you been there before? Hata huku wamba protection, lakini umestuka tu, umestuka tu, fya, God is on my side. Are you following what I say? It, it is the mandate of heaven to protect all of us because we are Kenyan citizens. Now, if then you are born again, the rule of engagement again change. Oh, somebody help me here. The rule of engagement does what? Change. If you are born again, you have what we call dual citizenship. You are a Kenyan by citizen, as a citizen by birth. And then you become a citizen of heaven by rebirth. Oh, I'm teaching something here. Naturally, you are a Kenyan by birth. And you become a citizen of heaven by rebirth. Because you are born again. So you enjoy protection as a Kenyan, you enjoy protection as a citizen of heaven, but the rule of engagement will change again at some point. There are those who are citizens of heaven who are still here doing nothing for the heaven they belong and there are those who are citizens of heaven but representing the interest of heaven. Sit down for a minute. Somebody shout I hear. Somebody shout I hear. Somebody shout, I hear. Somebody shout, I hear. So there we go. You must be serving the interest of the kingdom of God for you to enjoy certain blessings of the kingdom of God. You can be born again, very holy, but die poor. I, made a, I preached a message last year. Remember? It's on YouTube. That you can be holy but die poor. Oh yes. Because being blessed has nothing to do with being. Holiness and blessing don't go together. Holiness. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5. And the pure in heart shall inherit. Not prosperity. The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. Those are two things. You be meek. You learn. You do what you are taught. You inherit the heart. Possession. You become poor, heaven pure. In heaven, people are also in levels. Hey, oh Jesus, don't be deceived. If you don't work very hard, even in heaven, oh, you don't like it. Levels don't change. Are you following me? A rich man died who was not following God. He went to hellfire. Are we together? A poor man that respected God died, went to heaven. The Bible said he was dwelling in the bosom of Abraham.
Abraham was a father on earth. He is even still fathering Lazarus, the poor man in heaven. Now, when the rich man wanted to send somebody to his family, he, uh, Lazarus is at the bosom of Abraham, but he's not talking to Lazarus. He's talking to Abraham, his level mate. Even when I was on earth, Lazarus was my errand boy. I can't talk to him even now. Abraham, you are in my level, though on that side. Please send that boy on your chest. Because I and I'm trying to look at it. It meant a bingun and when you or the moto on a corner. Even in heaven, levels are not the same. See, listen, if you don't command respect here, you won't command respect in heaven. If you don't make changes and affect lives here, you can never affect life in heaven. The way Lazarus was an errant boy on earth, he became an errant boy even in heaven. That will not be a portion. Sit down, let me show you something. So when you serve the interests of the kingdom of God, Heaven is obligated to give you benefits that heaven gives to his representatives. When you are serving the interests of the kingdom of God, it is the mandate of heaven to protect you, take care of you, provide for you. There is a rule of engagement you must understand. It is one thing to be a member Another thing to be born again is another thing to go to church. But it is totally another thing to understand the rule of engagement. He said, and Jacob do I, have I loved, and Esau have I hated. The same God. Jacob I have loved, by his brother I have hated, but the same God. Kuna watu ni kama munga na wachukia. Oh yeah. One day I will teach on people God they hate and people God love. Oh, this year I will teach you some things. Have you ever felt some time nikama munga mekwacha? Anybody? Kuna time mefika malo mesikia nikama munga mekwacha. Nikama unasikia kama munga yu karibu. Na usifanya nisikia vibaya. Kama usha wa isikia kama mimi. Kuna time tu mesikia umesikuma umefika mali nikama mungu. Ayuko na mambo yangu. Have you been there? Thank you. Put your hands down. Next time I will teach you. I think I can teach you next Sunday. I want to on Friday. I will teach on the on the on the mystery of Isaiah 45. Eh? I will connect you with the wisdom of the serpent. The mystery of Isaiah 45. Because this year we must touch millions. God said, Jacob have I loved, but it had to take Jacob wisdom to know what to do to Laban for him to collect miracle from Laban. But God said, Jacob have I loved. But even though God loved him, he had to apply some wisdom by the well for a miracle to happen. The Bible says, he was so blessed until Laban and his sons were worried. But he was not blessed because God loved him. He was blessed because he was able to apply wisdom. 2023, 2024, we will apply wisdom. I said we will apply wisdom. I said we will apply wisdom. Are we together up to there? So you can belong to a kingdom but still be denied benefits of the same kingdom. Because you are not engaging correctly through the rule of engagement. If Kenyan government sends you, it will take care of you. If Kenyan government did not send you, if you send yourself, you take care of yourself. Does it make sense? Kuna mtu hapa amai fanyia kampuni, alafu umetumwa kufanya sales and marketing mahali ama umetumwa something to go and do for the company by show of hands. Mkitumwanga na kampuni muende mahali bila wewe kujituma, unaendaka na pesa yako ama mnapewanga kitu from the company. Company inawapatia some money, isn't it? Is that true? 
ukitumwa na kampuni unapewa fare unapewa pesa ya kukula unapangwa una imagine the truth because you are going to represent the, the, the interest of company lakini ukienda hiyo town kivyako unakuja kuomba pesa kwa kampuni you take care of yourself because you sent wow wish how i wish i had pastors here some people need to hear this many pastors started churches on their own accord that's not the topic for the day glory to jesus hallelujah paul said and to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above and he said my god shall supply my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus not according to the economy of Kenya oh you're not following the bible does not say god shall supply money according to what the government is saying according to the riches because i belong there are you following what i'm saying now so it doesn't matter the political party that is in power it doesn't matter the person who is the president we don't dwell by the economy of the country so we shouldn't put our eyes on government and begin to blame the government so much let them do what they are doing if they can do well if they do wrongly our own economy is not controlled by what they are saying does it make sense now do you know even in this economy what what one alia some people are making millions of money are you aware oh yeah the way people are crying so it takes you to understand that you not depend on them then change your dependability change your dependability because most times we blame god and blame the government for what we ought to have done differently paul said my god shall supply my needs as a citizen of heaven according to his riches in glory through christ not according to the political party in power or you appear somebody is not hearing what i'm saying here it is not according to political party in power it's according to his riches in heaven through christ jesus and paul was talking this way because this church had blessed him so he was blessing them in return so he was telling them you people my god because you have done this to me my god so go and read your bible correctly he was replying after they have acted he said now that you have done this my god now shall supply your need according to his riches in glory through christ but sometimes we declare that statement upon ourselves without understanding the rule of engagement. My God shall supply my needs according to his he said with God me. From which point are you talking that statement? I'm not aware. It was a prophetic declaration Paul made upon the church. After the church blessed him and he said because of what you have done now my God shall supply It is not by him that runneth, sit down, nor by him that willeth, but through him that show mercy. It is purely about God to choose who to bless and who not to bless. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. He said, for it is him that gives us power to make wealth. 8, 18 of Deuteronomy. It is God that gives us power to make wealth. He chooses who to give that power to make wealth. And, and you shall remember the Lord your God. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Ndio maana kuna watu wanatengeneza anga pesa mapema, kuna watu wanatengeneza pesa wakiwa wazee. Kwa sababu ni Mungu ndiye anachagua wakati wa mtu. It's not him that run, not him that will. He say time and chance he give to them all, but it is him that chooses when to bless somebody. But by prayer we can tell him God what do you want to do next year do it this year. Are you aware? Through prayer by prayer, you can change the happenings. You tell God, I know you want to bless me next year, no problem. But I, I'm pushing that blessing now. 
Somebody shout I hear. Genesis 26 verse 12. Let me show you something. Genesis 26 verse 12. Genesis 26 verse 12 through verse 14. Then Isaac sowed in that land uh -huh. and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Isaac sowed the seed in the same land when there is famine. Drought. Nothing is working like Kenya economy now is going through drought. Our own is even worse than their own. Are you following? But Isaac, because he understands the rule of engagement, the same time people are complaining, he was investing. And you know, a hundredfold mean a thousand. Meaning a thousand times. The word a hundredfold mean a thousand times. Harvest. Wakati wadona complain. For you to operate in that level, you must understand what they call the rule of engagement. And the Lord blessed him. Uh -huh. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds ah. and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Until people are worried, this, what kind of a human being is this? What kind of a human being is this? What Isaac did, he mastered the rule of engagement. Listen to me. In the place where you are working, just master the rule of engagement. So next time I will be teaching on covenanting God. Last week, Patron, I told you about the how God of covenant, isn't it? So I will teach you on covenanting God so that at this level you understand the rule of engagement. Because for covenants to work for you, you must understand the rules of engagement of the covenant. Because there is no covenant without rules of engagement. Is this too far for somebody? Is this too much? Are you following what I'm saying? Where you are working, even as a member, as a worker in this church, work very hard to understand the rule of engagement. If you don't understand the rule of engagement, you will fight for positions for nothing. Oh, God help me here. You will fight for positions for nothing. Because you don't understand the rule of engagement. Every church has what they call the rule of engagement. When you work for Safaricom, there is rule of engagement. If you work for Airtel, there is rule of engagement. If you work for Kenya Pipeline, the rule of engagement is different. The rule of engagement in Shalom members is different from Redeemed. It's different from uh, Deliverance. It's different from Catholic. In Catholic, priests don't marry. In Shalom, we marry wives. My wife is here. Rule of engagement is different. Oh, you're not hearing me again. You're not hearing me again. Are you following what I say? Are you, are you? The thing is for you to serve the interest of this church correctly. Understand the rule of engagement. Do you know why people fight for nothing? Because they don't know what they are serving. If you know God you serve and the mandate through which you are serving, you have no time for nonsense. But when you don't understand the rule of engagement, you begin to fight a necessary battle. You know what you're doing. You will purely remain to your work and do your work and you're done. You don't have nonsense time to fight people. They will be busy fighting you. You're busy doing your work. Sit down. Understand the rule of what? Engagement. I want to say this one on passing. Next Sunday, we are selecting new leaders, HODs, for the leadership for 2024. Amen? And then I will take, I think, two or four Sundays and teach on loyalty. Teach on what? Somebody say loyalty. Somebody say loyalty. I will teach on loyalty, not in the first service, in the main service. The whole church, not workers, every member. Because most times, people don't know. Never take sides with a friend or a sibling against a father. Put it down. 
Never you take sides. Never. With a sibling, a brother, a friend against fathers. Mostly, biologically, even spiritually. Never. I will have to advise you. I'm just digressing a little. Follow me. Because fathers give identity. Fathers give inheritance. Did you hear what I said? Fathers give what? Identity. Fathers gives inheritance. You are making sense because you are connected to a father here. Trust you me. Disconnect from this grace. You become useless. Oh. You don't like it again. Are you following what I'm saying? You become relevant because you are connected. When you disconnect, you become useless. Hey. Fathers give identity. They give inheritance. You make sense because of your connectivity. You become relevant because of connectivity. But when you disconnect, you become irrelevant. Noah was drunk and naked. But in the mouth of the drunkard who was naked, lied blessing and curses. When fatherhood is mentioned, you must be careful. In the mouth of a drunkard man and a naked man, lied blessing and curses. When he blessed, the man was blessed till today. When he cast, the two sons were cast till to. The two sons are blessed, one son is cast. But by a drunkard father. And a naked father. Eli was a backslidden priest, but he raised the most sharpest prophet that we have ever recorded in the Bible. The Bible says Samuel was the most sharpest prophet. The Bible records that none of his words fell on the ground and failed to come to pass. But when he was raising Samuel, he was a backslidden priest. The Bible says the lamp of the altar had gone dim at that time. When fatherhood is mentioned, you must be careful. I will teach on loyalty in this church this year. Hey, the word was rare. No revelation in that time. Nobody is not hearing God anymore. But when he advised a son, he became the sharpest prophet. Don't joke with fathers. He can be drunk and naked, but blessing is in his mouth. When he says you are blessed, even demons can do nothing about it. Same Samuel is the one who anointed Saul king. The same Samuel, the one anointed David king. Dangerously anointed. But who raised him? A backless leading priest that God was angry with him. The day God spoke to Samuel the first time, the first prophecy was on his father. Because God wanted to deal with this man because of his children. But regardless of his mistakes, God gave him room to release a blessing. I will teach you something today. You can choose to disobey my words because I'm very thin and small-bodied. You want a very fat prophet. Listen to me. It's not about my voice. It's about the grace of God in my side. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? It's not about my age. Age and grace have nothing to do. It's about grace. Age and grace sound the same, but they are not the same. Don't be deceived. Never you join a sister, a brother against a father. You will regret for generations. That's what have helped me. My father, Prophet David Usu, there was a time he had battles. He closed church in the UK. He had no church. People fought him. People told me, sir, that man doesn't have a church. That man is deceiving you. I said, the one that doesn't have a church is my father. Now he has one of the best churches in town. I didn't see what was happening. I saw the future. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because my tomorrow is not what you see. Thank God you have seen my yesterday and today. You have not yet seen a glimpse of tomorrow. Oh, you're not, you're not here. Yesterday, but one, we went to preach somewhere. And I was appointed without my knowledge as a member of board of trustee of a university. Am I saying the truth? And they say, Prophet, with your permission, allow us. I say, Sir, it's allowed. 
you don't know what tomorrow holds. Be careful. The same man you are joking today, you may look for appointment to see tomorrow. Oh, God is a mystery. You can't underrate God. When fatherhood is mentioned, you be careful. Sit down. I was digressing a little. I will teach on mentorship this year and loyalty. There's what they call spiritual protocol and laws. There's what they call spiritual protocols and laws that govern the rule of engagement. Protocols and laws that govern the rule of engagement. There's what they call the legalities and the illegalities. That's why a very young girl can be very well blessed. Somebody mwenye ana barua kuliko lakini unafanyia kazi. Can I surprise you today? Can I, can I ask you a question? Honest question. How many times do you go to office in a week? From Monday to Friday. You go every day. How many times does your boss come to office every week? Maybe once. But between you and him, who benefits of the work? But who works more? You don't because you don't understand the rule of engagement. The day you understand the rule of engagement, you become like him. You're not hearing me here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who goes to class to teach every day? The teacher. But the owner of the school sits somewhere. Whoever is ahead of you knows what you don't know doesn't matter how educated you are. You must understand what they call the rule of engagement. What makes me Prophet Robert is what I know. And what brings you here every Sunday is because there's what I know you don't know. The day you know what I know, you can't sit here. <laughs> hey! Rule of engagement! You learn and learn, relearn and learn again. Does it make sense? And when your boss comes to office, everybody's running to his office with reports. Eh? So this one, this one, this one, this one. And he doesn't seem to care. <laughs> he is least bothered, but you are more bothered. Because you need that job, he doesn't need it. Can I submit to you today? Can I submit to you today? Sit down, let me leave that submission. I will teach you some things this year. Somebody shout the rule of engagement. Oh, shout the rule of engagement. I said somebody shout the rule of engagement. According to the above scripture, Isaac understood the rule of engagement. And that's why he received a hundredfold when everybody else was complaining. We don't know what we are Come utaelewa rule of engagement. Because hiyo biashara unafanya kuna watu wameshakuwa matajiri na hiyo biashara. Is that true? Na kuna watu wameshindwa kwa hiyo biashara wakafunga. So tofauti sio biashara ni kuelewa rule of engagement. You can just be doing your salon business before you know it the deputy president or the president wife Munga na connect na wao. Ucha umoka. And I could make their personal salons. But you must understand. Hey, it's not about plating well. It's about understanding the rule of engagement. How to engage. There are technicalities and legalities and illegalities. That's what will sustain you even when everybody else goes down. There are men of God in this world today, you cannot do anything to them. Because God has brought them to a point they have understood rule of engagement. I saw people attacking Bishop T.D. Jakes. I said these ones are just promoting him. There are levels you get with God that people, scandals take you up. 
There are levels you get with God when people raise candles on your name. They take you up instead of bringing you down. But you, you try to behave. If you see people attacking TB Joshua after dying, there's what that guy knew. How can you become an enemy of a dead person? There's what it is. There's what there's something in him that you are fighting. What kind of a human being is this? So they are not fighting the late. They are not fighting their wife. They are fighting the knowledge that impacted to the wife. That has made the wife relevant after the man has died. But those who don't know are also saying, ah, TV just was fake. You do know fake and real. When you understand the rule of engagement, people like Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. The man, I had his testimony. The man started preaching 1970, I don't know what. 72. He has gone through all of it. But what sustains such people is rule of engagement. Once you understand it, it brings you back for line. Even when you are trying to go out of line. What makes you stand when everybody is going down is understanding the rule of engagement of the game. Christianity has the rule of engagement. You understand it, you overcome. You don't understand it, you become a politician. Sit down. When it was time for Isaac to bless Esau, he told him, go and get me meat. Go and get me what? Meat. I want to bless you. Because for God to bless you, there must be a charge. There must be a responsibility. Go and get me meat. I want to bless you. The mother of Jacob, Rebecca, had the father discussing with the son that I want to bless me. Get me something. So what the mother did, the father did not understand the conversation between Rebecca and the angel. When there was two nations fighting in her stomach, the man didn't know that. So when she went to inquire of the Lord, the Lord told her, there are two nations who will be separated from your womb. But in my mind, because I love Jacob, he will be stronger than his brother. The first shall serve the younger. So the younger shall be greater. So the mother had the prophecy about the children inside the womb. The father was not there. So the father is practicing the law that says the blessing is for the firstborn. So he wants to bless the firstborn the way originally it's supposed to be. But the rule of engagement changed the day the mother went to inquire of the Lord. So the mother told Jacob, I know what happened. Don't listen to your father. Get very quickly. I know how to prepare. I'll give you check to your father. Let him bless you. Because originally the blessing is yours. But should he find out and they want to curse you. Let the curse be upon me. Have you read the Bible? Let the curse be where? Go and read your Bible very well. Immediately after that blessing, Rebecca died. Sit down. Oh, I will teach you something. After the blessing of Jacob instead of Isaac, Rebecca died. Because she took the curse that was supposed to go to Jacob because he played his brother. Traditionally, it was Esau that was supposed to be blessed. But Jacob took because the mother understood it. And he said, I will pay the price if, if a price has to be paid so that the right thing has to be done. So when Esau came back to Isaac, he said, Papa, bless me. He said, I bless your brother. And I've made him a master over your head. For you to make it in life, you must break the yoke of your brother that I've put on your neck. So what it means, God put embargo. I don't know if I'm teaching something here. God did something. God blessed Jacob and put embargo on Esau. So you can prosper, but you can't prosper so far. So for you to pass this level, there is a yoke you must break. Woo. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 through verse 10. 
You are changing levels in the name of Jesus. I said you are changing levels in the name of Jesus. So there is rule of engagement. Don't think it's just about praying. Have you asked yourself, why are people praying if they don't see miracles? Have you asked yourself, for how many years have you prayed for something, nothing is happening? Because yes, you are praying, but you don't understand the rule of engagement about the prayer you are praying. So it's one thing to pray, it's another thing to understand the rule of engagement of prayer. A prayer that birth result is a prayer that is brought from a point of understanding. When a woman enters labor ward, the woman doesn't know respect. She doesn't know protocol. Did you hear what I said? If a woman enters labor ward, she doesn't know anything like respect. She doesn't know anything like protocol. It's a protocol you can't care. You only care about giving birth. Uh, women, am I talking? So if you enter labor ward, you don't be surprised. Because they don't know anything like protocol. There's nothing like that. We are giving birth. Final. Anything about, about, apart from that, I don't care. The rule of engagement. Now, where is she? She came when I'm looking for somebody to put labor ward. Come on, and I'm back. Come on, now you're going to go. And when you get labor ward, you can't put a mama in Masai and I'm back in Jaluo. I love when I'm going to land in Jaluo. I'm going to become a you. Once they're in labor ward, it's about giving birth. It's not about what I do. Are you following what I'm saying here? Rule of engagement. Once you understand it, you are done. Kuna vitu vinasumbua wengine haita kusumbua wewe. Are you following what I'm saying? Because you understand how to engage by the laws of, the, of, of that business. Sit down. Somebody pray with me. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, open my ears. Open my eyes. That I may understand the rule of engagement of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 through verse 10. Bring it. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Uh -huh. That you always having all sufficiency in all things. That you have all sufficiency in all things. May have an abundance for every good work. That you may have enough for every good work. And as it is written, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. And it remains forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower, the same God that supplies seed to the sower, and bread for food, and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown. Supply and multiply seed you have sown. And increase the fruit of your righteousness. And increase the fruit of your righteousness. Leave it there. Now the rule of engagement changes. As a Kenyan citizen, it is required of you to pay tax. Are we together? So that government can pay salaries. Is that true? Can build roads. Can do developments. Is that true? Is that true? We are supposed to pay what? Tax. And when they question Jesus, Jesus said, give Caesar what belongs to him. Because there's the rule of engagement that control Kenya. I, I, am I teaching anybody here? Am I talking to somebody here? So therefore, as a citizen of kingdom of God, deposited in Shalom Embassy, it is also required for you to pay your tithe to help this kingdom run its affairs. Can I say again? For Kenya to build the roads we want them to build, we must pay. And for this church to go where God said it must be, you must pay. That's the rule of engagement. It is illegal by the law of this land for you not to pay tax and you are working, you are doing business. It's illegal. It can be charged in the court of law. Upatekana unaepa tax. is illegal. The same way in the church is illegal to eat tithe. Oh, you're not happy again? Oh, yeah, the church is quiet now. This our church will go far. It will not go anywhere. <laughs> Until 
you start practicing what is supposed to be done. Oh, are you, are you here again? Rule of? For any government to pay its workers, it must collect tax. For any ministry to be successful, members of that church must pay tithe. So if you're not paying tithe, you're the reason why the church is not moving forward. That's the truth. If all of us can pay tithe faithfully, we are done. We are? Kenya is sustained by 40 million people. China is sustained by hundreds of millions of people. Every country has its members. Shalom has its members. Oh, you're not hearing me. Do you know we are more than Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe are around 4 to 5 million people. They're not up to 10 million. Yes. And that is enough to sustain that economy. Kenya, we are 40, 50 million. We are enough to sustain our economy. Oh, I'm teaching something very deep today. Every country, if you go to China, they have hundreds of millions of people. Is that true? You go to Nigeria, they have hundreds of millions of? Millions of people. But that one can run the economy of that country. The one in Kenya can run the economy of this country. Now you three, four, five million in Zimbabwe, you have to pay the money, you have to pay the Meaning it's enough. You have to so Shalom with 150, 200 members, if they pay their tithe, it's enough to run the affairs of the ministry. The question is, let us understand the rule of? Ask yourself, then figure. A simple calculation. Chukwa calculator. Anybody? Very quickly. Chukwa calculator. Let me show you something. 50 times 4 times 12. 50 times 4 times 12. You need to 50 times 4 times 12. A simple math. 50, ti 50 bob times 4 times 12. 2,000? If you are giving offering of 50 bob every Sunday, you will have only given 2,400 for the whole year. And this church, we are paying rent 150,000 per month. How many do we need that to give 50 per week for us to be able to, to sustain this church? Uh, you need to understand the rule of engagement. Is it true? So, no, no, no. You need to understand what is really happening on the ground. Because sometimes I go out of my way to make sure it is done. And you hear somebody say, ah, Papa. <laughs> so, divide 150,000 by 2,400. How many do we need? No. Figure 150,000 times 12 months. Figure 150 times 12 months. Simple mathematics. Simu tu moja natuwa sadaka elfumili miyane kwa hivu kwa mwaka moja. Kwa mwaka moja. Aya. Figure rent ya church ya mwaniwa. 150 times 12. Is 1 point what? 1.8 million. So how much of 2,400 do we need to be able to pay 1.8 million? Now, I want you to understand the reality because some people just think, Pastor, I'm going to pay sir. And I'm going to sadaka. Are we together? You have to throw your mentality so that you begin to work hard. Are we together? How much? 2,400 and 1.8 million. Seven? So we need 750 members in this church to be able to sustain this church. So that one tells you how much I go out of my way to make sure that this church survives here. Now, am I talking to anybody here? Yeah? That one tells you we need 700 and, and what? How many members are we today? Are we up to 150? Am, am I teaching you something? So you need to understand what really happened in church so that you can stop politicking with people. Because ask yourself, how much do I give every week? Alafu, if you imagine when you're on a alafu, Simple question. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah? Because if you don't understand the rule of engagement, I'll 
au anahesabingi sadaka niliambia sikuizo nakula sadaka ya dada really is there, any, is there anything to be eaten <laughs> Am I communicating something? Does it make sense? If you don't understand the rule of engagement, you make noise without reason. But when you know what is happening, you know how to behave yourself. Sit down for a minute. Somebody shout I hear. Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says, He that supplies seed to the sower or supply bread to the eater and multiply the seed sown. In church, we have two categories of people, eaters and sowers. Ask your neighbor, are you an eater or a sower? Najira nyaka sipo kuongelesha mwambia na kususpect. In every church we have what? Eaters and sowers. Please somebody get an answer. What did they tell you? Did any, imekuwa ngumu kujibu, isn't it? Are you an eater or a sower? Now the Bible says God multiplies seed sown, not bread eaten. So there is no multiplication until there is seed sowing. So this is the rule of engagement. Eaters don't multiply. Without seed, you can't multiply. Eaters can't harvest. Because without a seed, there is no harvest. Genesis 8 verse 22. Genesis 8 22. The Bible say, seed time and harvest will not cease. Take it for me. Eight. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest time. And cold, cold and heat. Uh-huh. And summer and winter. Uh-huh. And day and night uh-huh. shall not cease. Shall not cease. It's a, it's, it's a principle. You are, this is a law. This is what? A law. So there is no harvest until there is a seed. Isaiah 55 verse 10. Isaiah 55 verse 10. I want us to pray. Are you being blessed? Are you blessed? Are you learning something? So the rule of engagement changes. For as the rain comes down ah. and the snow from heaven ah. and do not return there ah. but water the earth uh-huh. and make it bring forth and bud ah. that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Yes. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Uh-huh. It shall not return to me void, mm. but it shall accomplish what I please. Ah. And it shall prosper in the things we, for which I sent it. Simple. Until you sow, you can't harvest. Psalms 37 verse 19. Sowers don't depend on the economy of the country. Sowers don't depend on the political party on seat. Sowers don't depend on the person on the seat as a president. Sowers don't depend on what is happening with the GDP. Sowers don't depend on who is stealing money in the government and who is not stealing. Because their economy is different from the normal economy. Are we together? Thirty-nine verse, uh, 37 verse 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil times. Those who sow seeds cannot be ashamed even in the evil times. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Even when it is famine, they shall be satisfied. That shall be your portion. I said that shall be your portion. I said that shall be your portion. In the days of famine, God will satisfy you. When people are going through shame, God will fight for you. Psalms 33 verse 19. 33 verse 19. 33 verse 19 of Psalms. The de- the, to deliver their soul from death uh-huh. and to keep them alive in famine. What God does when you are a giver, he delivers you from premature death. There is a woman in the Bible who even died, but because of her giving, she was resurrected. Dorcas. The Bible says when she gave Tabitha and people realized this woman is dying with a heart of giving. They said, prophet, this one cannot die. Go and bring for us Peter. 
And when Peter came, Peter also joined them in agreement. She can't die. When I pray for people here, some people get healed, some don't get healed. The difference is the rule of engagement. Oh, you're not hearing me again. If I pray for three people, two are healed, one is not healed. The difference, see your mungu, see your pastor, the rule of engagement. Are you following what I'm saying? God is committed to deliver them from death and to keep them far from lack. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. I said that shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Deep calls for deep. Ask your neighbor, how deep is your faith? Ask them, how deep is your giving? Ask your neighbor, how deep is your commitment? 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. 2 verse 2. 2 Timothy. I want us to pray. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Uh -huh. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You must be able to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Ah. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Uh -huh. And also if, any comp if anyone competes in athletics, mm -hmm. he is not crowned unless he completes according to the rules. Until he completes according to the rules of engagement. Continue. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Uh -huh. Consider what I say. And may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Uh -huh. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Uh. For which I suffer trouble as an evildoer even to the point of chains. Uh. But the word of God is not chained. It's not chained. Continue. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect. Uh -huh. That they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Uh -huh. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. Uh -huh. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. Uh. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Simple. Do you understand the rule of engagement? We suffer with him, we enjoy with him. We deny him, he deny us. We give, he will give us. We refuse to give, he will refuse to give us. We do good, he will do us good. We don't do good, he will refuse good to come. It's the rule of engagement. Continue. If we are faithless, uh -huh. he remains faithful. Ah. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, uh -huh. charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, uh -huh. to the ruin of hearers. Uh -huh. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, uh, a, a worker workman. who does not need to be ashamed, uh -huh. rightly dividing the word of truth. Continue. But shun, profane, and... I and idle babblings, uh -huh. for they will increase to more ungodliness. Continue. And their message will spread like cancer. Uh -huh. Hymenas and Philetas are of this sort, uh -huh. who have strayed concerning the truth, uh -huh. saying that the resurrection is, also, or is already past, uh -huh. and they overthrow the faith of some. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God mm. stands having this seal. Mm. The Lord knows those who are his. Uh -huh. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Uh -huh. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Now hold it there. Today I'm doing a long reading. I want you to go back and read that scripture. He's talking about the rule of engagement. Are we together? They say now in the same house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some of honor and some of dishonor. In my house, I see mama serving guests depending on the type of guest that comes. Shout out here. When there is a type of guest who come, I see there is a particular vessel she will bring. I don't need to tell her, but I will just see. 
But there is a type of guest who come. She will use the normal, hello, the same house. So the type of guest determines the type of vessel. The same house, the same host. I want you to learn as we close. Are you, are you together here? <laughs> the Bible says the same, but some are of honor and some are of dishonor. Ask your neighbor, are you a member of honor in this church? If they answer, you tell them, do you think it's true? You are true? Do you think it's true? No, kama jirani akuongeleshi, mwambie takushuku. Ask them one more time, do you think you are a, a daughter or a son of honor? Yeah? Are we together? The same church. But they are members of honor. And they are members of this honor. There are people I can't send anywhere. But there are people I must send somewhere. It's not the issue of who has money, who doesn't have money. Who is honorable? And honor is earned. I've talked too much, isn't it? I've said so many things, isn't it? Finish, verse 11, verse 21. This is the rule of engagement. Very simple. Same house, same host, different types of guests will determine the type of the vessel. Therefore, if any... They are not even worth it. Mgeni ya mekutembelea kuna saani wezi toa because hake pasua, haizi nunua. So unasema leta hile ya kinananiyo. Ya plastic, kwa sabu kwanza, hata hake pasua wezi. Kwa kuna muda anza nunua dozen of that one. Hata hake pasua na mwambia don't pay because you know. <laughs> Niwona mwambia don't pay. Lakini kuna muda hake pasua, nika muna siya kumwambia pay. Are you following what I say? Ask your neighbor for the last time, are you a vessel of honor in this house? Do you think so? If a man therefore purge himself from this, it shall be a vessel unto honor. Uh -huh. Sanctified and useful for the master. Yes. Prepared for every good work. If a man purge himself. Give me a different version. I want to know what purge is. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself. If you correct yourself. Mm. That's the word. Ask your neighbor, are you, going to correct, are you going to repent from today? Ask your neighbor, are you going to repent? Or you are not talking to your neighbor? Are you going to purge yourself? Yes. They all say, if a man purge himself, meaning, if you have realized this teaching was yours, correct something. Watcha kufanya tabia kuja church on Sunday peke yake, Friday ukuji. You are making yourself a vessel of? No, did I say? Na Bible. You don't come. To gonna pray and fasting, you don't pray. To gonna service come here, you may figure absent. Hello? Purge yourself. I must be a vessel of honor. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet, everybody. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 17 through verse 18, Malachi 3 17 verse 18, he said, I will spare those who serve my interest. Malachi chapter 3 verse 17. Give it to me on the screen before we pray. You are holy. Holy you are. Says. Says. They shall be mine. They shall be mine. Says the Lord of hosts. Uh-huh. On the day that I make them my jewels, ah. and I will spare them. Make them my jewels and spare them. As a man spares his own son who ah. serves him. That serveth him. As a man spares his son that serves him. Not his son that he gave birth to. Oh, you are, you are not reading the Bible again. Did you see the Bible? 
As a man spares his son that serves him. Not the one that he gave birth to. When I heard God say Jacob I love and that's how I hated. That statement has made me afraid. Because what is written is for our edification. It means therefore that God can hate a man. And God can love. Lift up your hands with me in prayer. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father. Father. Give me knowledge. Give me knowledge. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. I want to understand. I want to understand. The rule of engagement. The rule of engagement. Of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. So that I be found worthy. So that I may be found worthy. Any time. Any time. When I'm tested. When I'm tested. When I'm tried. When I'm tried. May I be found worthy. May I be found worthy. May I understand. May I understand. The rule of the engagement. The rule of engagement. Of the kingdom of God. Of the kingdom of God. That from today. As from today. I may learn. I may learn. To practice, to practice, to serve, to serve the, interest the, the interest of the kingdom. I want to walk, I want to walk in, accordance in accordance with the rule of engagement as it is written that you protect your son, that you protect your son the one that serves you the one that in, the Jesus, in the name of Jesus. From today, from today I will not walk in ignorance. I will not walk in ignorance. I will walk with understanding. I will walk with understanding. I will walk with knowledge. I will walk with knowledge. Because I will not fail. Because I will not fail. When others are failing. When others are failing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now let me say something before you pray. The Bible says, I've seen another error under the sun. Follow me, follow me. I've seen another error under. When the princess walk where? On foot. And the princess and, and the normal people are riding on. When princess doesn't understand the rule of engagement, though a prince, yes, but they will be walking. It doesn't matter if you're a prince or a daughter of the kingdom. If you don't understand the rule of engagement, you will. Remember the Lord said this year we will get cars we didn't buy. But for you to drive a car you did not buy, you need to understand the rule. Oh, you're not following me again? Because though you are a princess, though you are a prince, you can still walk when servants are riding on horses. If a servant understands the rule of engagement, he will ride on horses. We are going to pray, Lord, I want to walk with, with understanding. I don't want to walk with ignorance this year. I want to walk with what? Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to operate with understanding. I want to operate with understanding. I will not suffer. I will not suffer. The consequence of ignorance. The consequences of ignorance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray, Lord. I want to Lord, walk with Lord, understanding. Operate with understanding. With understanding. Lord, I, don't I don't want to suffer the consequences of ignorance. Lord, I want to walk in ignorance. We don't want this we want to walk in your understanding. We want to walk in your wisdom, King of Mahajan. In our hearts that we may see and understand. I want to walk with understanding. The Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. I need to acquire the necessary knowledge that I may not perish with them that perish. I want to operate with understanding and knowledge that I may not perish when they perish. I want to walk with understanding that I may know how to engage when I'm supposed to engage. I shall not walk with foolish. I want to walk in knowledge. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to walk in knowledge. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to walk in knowledge. I shall not be foolish. I shall not be ignorant. I want to walk in the name of Jesus. I shall not suffer the pain of ignorance. I refuse to suffer the pain of the ignorance. I refuse to suffer the pain of the ignorance. Lord, I to the rule of engagement. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say with me the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shall not suffer what my father suffered. I shall not suffer what my father suffered. I shall not suffer what my mother suffered. I shall not suffer what my mother suffered. Because I acquire understanding. Because I acquire understanding. And I shall operate with the rule of engagement. And I shall operate with the rule of engagement. From today, 
Open my ears. That I may understand your will. Open my eyes. That I may understand what you want. From today, I will not walk with ignorance. I will not walk with ignorance. Open my ears. That I may hear your voice. Open my eyes. That I may see your will. In the name of Jesus. Say my people perish because of lack of knowledge. When you don't know, you perish with them that perish. But when you know, you can run away from havoc. Today, God will separate you. I said God will separate you. Amen. 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 I'm saying God will separate you. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Kindly be seated a few minutes. Every relationship has rule of engagement. Every marriage has rule of engagement. Every kingdom has rule of engagement. Once you understand how God behaves and you master it, you are done. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Put your hands together for Jesus one more time. So, God bless you for coming. Are you happy you came to church? Are you sure? Did you learn something? Ask your neighbor a few seconds. What did you learn? Kama kuna kitu alishikanisha. Unjua mtu anataka alikuja na ako ashika kitu. Muulize tu hii yote dada ameongea kuna kitu umeshika? Na ukiona mwenye karibu na wewe akuongeleshi, unaweza mshuku because you never know. <laughs> Wamekuambia amelearn kitu. Ama anakuchenga. Are you sure? Hallelujah. The rule. Does it make sense now? So if you're not serving the interests of the kingdom of God, there are benefits you can never enjoy. Hakuna hakuna games, hakuna shortcut. Hakuna corruption. Hakuna corruption. The issue is serve the interest of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So I have a few announcements to make and I want to launch the partnership, 2024 partners today officially and then there are a few people I want to see after the service. So please be patient a little. Amen. So all departments, kila mutu waonana department leader wao and then the leaders and the workers can remain behind. There's a message, Pastor Eunice, will share with you on my behalf, Kidogo. Amen? But before I close, I want everybody go into your pocket and get a good seed. Go into your pocket, get a good seed, everybody, very quickly. I want to do something very prophetic. I want, I want to do something very prophetic. Amen? The Bible says, you are gods, but you die like mortal men. Give me I, um, Psalm 82. As you are getting the seed. If you have it on your phone, get to your impressa very quickly. <coughs> Psalms 82. I think it should be verse 2. They say, you are gods, but you die like mortal men. Why people die like normal people is because of lack of knowledge. When you don't know who you are, you die like any other person. It says? Psalms 82 verse 2. Uh -huh. It says, how long will you judge unjustly uh -huh. and show partially to the wicked? Uh-huh. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. I want the place that say, ye are gods. Not start from verse 5. Not 82. No, start verse 5, 82, verse 5. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundation of the earth are unstable. Many people don't know who they are. They don't understand who they are. And oh, it's verse 6. No, just, just hold it, just hold it. I'm already there now. You said it's not 82. <laughs> I told you it's verse 5. Are we together? <laughs> they said they do not know. Read together with me. One, two, three, go. They do not know. Neither do they. Understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundation and all the foundation of their are, are destroyed. Next verse now. They don't know. Neither do they understand. I they are gods. I say it. You are gods, 
And I, all of you are children of the Most High. I'm telling you, you are gods and you are children of the Most High, but you don't know, you don't understand. You walk about under confusion. And that's why you are allowing servants to ride on horses when you are supposed to be the one riding horses. There is what you don't know. If you know it, you don't understand it very well. Uh huh. But you shall die like men. They die like any other person. And fall like one of the princes. And fail and fall like any of them. The problem is you don't know. You don't understand. When you know who you are and understand who you are, you are done. Praise the Lord forever. Praise the Lord forever. Amen. After today, whoever, rides, whoever is riding your horse must come down from your horse. But I'm saying whoever is riding your horse must come down from your horse. Amen. And you must take over your horse and ride it. Amen. You hear what I'm saying here? Because we are not going to allow servants to do, enjoy things. Have you ever passed a place where you one young man or one young girl pulling a very dangerous machine? Have you ever been there before? Alafu nasikia, you must command your place. Are we together? I have said ye are God and all of you are children of the Most High. I want us to get a seat. We are going to sit to the altar. We are telling God, I have operated out of understanding. I didn't know what should be done. But from today, I want to connect myself with this revelation. I told you guys last week, when Jacob realized I've slept in this place, something is happening. Do you remember? Uh, how many was it on Sunday? Was it on Sunday I said it? When Jacob realized where he was sleeping, angels were ascending and descending. Naturally, angels should be descending and ascending. But Jacob saw angels ascending and he said, I must, I must do something. When I was sitting on covenants, you remember? And I said, Jacob, dimension of covenant, he poured oil and made a vow. 